Om Agyan Timidandasya Ganajana Salakaya Everyone Chaksu Un Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Vistam Stam Ditam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadam Mayam Dadati Swam Padanti Kam Pandeham Shiguro Shiyuta Padakamalam Shigurun Vaishnavam Scha Shi Rupam Sagraja Tam Sahagana Dragana Tam Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Sarvadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakam Vitam Scha Hey Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopi Sha Gopi Ka Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavane Swati Vrishavanu Suti Devi Pranamani Vahi Priye Pancha Kaupa Taru Vischa Kripa Sindhu Beva Cha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gaudavani Pacharine Nirvisesa Sunyavadi Pastyatya De Sitarine Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shiva Sari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So I just received the news just a few minutes ago <coughs> that one of uh, Srila Prabhupada's very, very exalted daughters just departed from the world this morning. She departed in Free Sri Vrindavan Dham. Fortunately, and under the care of the hospice team there. Her name was Krishna Nandini. She may, I don't know if she ever traveled to this part of the world, but she also was a traveling preacher. Um, she was one of the uh, first persons to really develop the preaching to uh, black people in America, especially in the area of Cleveland, Ohio. She was a very intimate and close friend of Srila Bhakti Tirtha Swami Maharaj. And personally, I spent much time and was part of many programs that she organized. In fact, we had organized a big three-day festival this year, in the beginning of September, but we do to the present situation with the virus, we had to cancel the program. So she was always bringing people together. She was very interfaith. She would put on many programs to invite people from all faiths to hear the holy name and to engage in dialogue with others of faith. She married, she, had, she married for the second time and her second husband was a devout Muslim, <laughs> devout, because I know him personally. And uh, although he was a devout Muslim, he respected and supported and also chanted Hare Krishna <laughs> due to her influence. <laughs> she was very dynamic, very personal, very outgoing and always enthusiastic to engage in service. She started, the last few years, she started to travel around the world and attend many programs that are going on and give lectures. She was the one of the first, she was actually the person who started Grihasta, uh, Grihasta Vision, yeah, Grihasta Vision team in America. It was her arrangement that started it, and she brought many other, what we say, devotees under her care, and she trained them, and she also published them a manual uh, based on this Grihasta vision. Um, she was uh, 
always inviting me to come to different programs, especially in the area of Cleveland, Ohio. And uh, she was very, um, what we could say, very enthusiastic and uh, to organize and bring people together in Krishna consciousness. But the amazing thing about her, she had 10 children. <laughs> 10 children and practically all of them became what we say active devotees. Many of them actually became initiated and she was one of the first to start homeschooling for children in America. And she also published her own manual on how to homeschool children and uh, was very enthusiastic. All her children were homeschooled, all ten of them. <laughs> and uh, her mother was a Prabhupada disciple also. Her mother was named Bhumata. <laughs> Prabhupada gave her the name Bhumata. And uh, so, uh, yeah, I also had interaction with her mother, Bhumata. She was also, uh, she was actually quite powerful and had a following of her own. And then, of course, Krishna Nandini was the outstanding child, and she took up the preaching after her mother departed the world in a very dynamic way. Uh, I actually had a very soft spot in my heart for Krishna Nandini. She was somebody who really, really showed so much kindness, personal attention, made many endeavors to bring me into very many programs. And uh, when she would always see me, she would say, Maharaj! <laughs> He would give me a big Maharaj greeting. <laughs> so when I saw that, I would always feel very much happy. <laughs> so she was a special person, uh, very dear. She received initiation in 1972 in uh, Dallas, Texas, in the temple in front of Radha Kalachanji which are the presiding deities in Dallas still today. Prabhupada installed them almost right around that same time. So, such an amazing person, and she did so much to spread Krishna consciousness. And in her last year, she wanted to do more, so she took up the mission of traveling and preaching everywhere. She would go to Canada, she would go to India, she would go to some European countries. So. And then uh, somehow or other, cancer hit, and then that slowed her down. But you can read in the la one of the recent magazines, Back to Godhead, uh, she was writing articles for Back to Godhead magazine, so she was also a good writer. And uh, so we can be assured that she got a great destination, that Krishna will show her special mercy and hopefully take her back to the spiritual world. She was very dear to all the devotees and very, she was everybody's mother. <laughs> so we will miss her, no doubt. Um, at least I will. Mm -hmm. I can't re can't think of uh, not seeing her again because I would always look forward to meeting her somewhere in the world. Usually in Toronto, Rathiatra, every year we would meet and then, then we would spend time. So I just wanted to speak a little bit about her because she's a worthy person who has much glorification due to her because of her dedication to spread Krishna consciousness, producing ten children, who practically every one of them became devotees, and actually helped her Muslim husband to become a Hare Krishna. <laughs> he, 
He's a really wonderful person. I, he's a personal friend also. So I just wanted to take this opportunity to say that uh, maybe all the devotees can offer their prayers to Srila Prabhupada and Krishna that she will get the full blessings and mercy of Lord Sri Krishna and Vrindavan. Hare Krishna. Is there any topic for class? <laughs> Two days, yeah. Mm. Well, I have a whole Govardhan Puja lecture that I will give on that day, which is. Um, will the lecture be in the evening? Yeah. It's a long lecture, so I guess we'll have to extend the class a little bit. <laughs> but it's a wonderful. Govardhan Puja is one of Krishna's outstanding leelas. Uh, just like when we, there's many outstanding leelas. Some of his outstanding leelas are Rasa Dance, Lifting Govardhan Hill, Stealing Butter. These are the ones that we are most familiar with and the most sweetest and most powerful of all. His uh, loving leelas. Um, when we sing the Damodar prayer, the last line, Dhamma, the mo what is that? Uh, what is the last line? Namaste to Dhammi Spuritya Dhamne Nati Otaraya Vishwasta Namo Radhikaya Radhikaya Tudia Priyaya Namo Nantalila Devaya Tubyam. That's very significant because Radharani's mentioned. Nantalila refers to Rasa dance. When we say Nantalila, we are actually talking about the Rasa dance. This is the commentary by the Acharyas for that last line of the Damodar prayer. It, rever it glorifies all of Krishna's leelas, but especially his Rasa dance, like that, which is the king of all. Leelas. There's where Krishna showed his utmost mercy to all the resident, all the gopis in Vrindavan. They have been hankering for Krishna. Krishna had separated himself from Vrindavan for many, many years in order to rid the world of demons. And although the, the, the devotees in Vrindavan were always waiting for Krishna to come back, feeling unhappy and very much in the mood of longing for Krishna. And Krishna was sending messages through messengers. Krishna was sending Uddhava, Krishna sent Balaram, Krishna sent so many messengers just to pacify the residents of Vrindavan that he's coming back. In fact, he wanted to come back just as much as the residents wanted him to come back. But Krishna knew he had to finish up the job because there were so many demons. There was Jarasandha, there was Salva, there was Kasi, there was uh, Shishupal, there was um, Dantravarka, there was uh, Pondraka, and there were, who, who else? Uh, there were many other demons. All of them were kings and had powerful armies. So we know Krishna comes yada yada hi dharmasyat glanir bhavati bharata bhutanam adharmasyat adatmanham srijami aham pranitranayam sadunam vinasanaya chaduskritam dharma samstapanartaya sambhavemi yuge yuge pravitranaya sadunam pranitranaya sadunam vinasanaya chaduskritam duskritam refers to eliminating the undesirable elements such as the demons. <clears throat> so although the Krishna was hankering in his heart, in his mind, his mother couldn't even, she couldn't even appear in public and she was so much feeling so much separation from Krishna that all she could do was cry all day. 
In fact, only Nanda Maharaj remained a little bit composed, but he was also feeling the separation from Krishna. But Krishna was just as much feeling that same separation, but Krishna knew he had to finish his business because there was nobody else on the planet who could rid these, these demons. And they were harassing so many people, the Yadu army, after Ugrasena took the throne and took over the position of Kamsa, Ugrasena's armies were not no match for all these powerful demons, and some of them were mystic demons, such as such as Shalva and Kashi, other one, and then Kashi's son Sudak, Sudakshina. So many demons. If we go through the list, we find there were. So many demons, and Krishna was just counting, you know, knocking them off one by one. <laughs> I was just reading how he killed Pondraka today. <laughs> when Pondraka sent a message into the assembly of Krishna and Dwarka, the messengers just started speaking that, you know, there is this master who is the Brahmin Paramatma. And all the assembly persons started to laugh. Is he Atma or is he Paramatma? <laughs> so this guy was making a fool out of himself, announcing about Pandraka, and Krishna was listening. Krishna said, I will, I will bless the earth by giving him a nice place to sleep. <laughs> Krishna wanted to, you know. He, Krishna responded, he said, I will meet him. And the earth will, he will also have a nice place. He will rest in peace. <laughs> and then he will become happy. <laughs> right now he's not happy, thinking he's me. <laughs> As though Krishna was just responding to the Brahmin. The Brahmin was getting all confused trying to speak to the assembly. And the assembly was laughing at him because he was a fool. <laughs> trying to announce that Puntraka was the Supreme Lord. <laughs> so Krishna came, and uh, and Krishna came, and then all these armies started to attack Krishna, all of these soldiers. And Krishna just, you know, sent his shooter Shan Chakra into there and just finished them off. <laughs> at, one per at one point, the king of Kasi, he also wanted to kill Krishna, so he had not and he was a worshiper of Lord Shiva. But Shiva wouldn't go for him because he was fight against Krishna. So then Krishna killed Kasi by cutting off his head and made him, making his head roll all the way back to all where all his friends were so they could see, here's your master. <laughs> so when his son Sudakshina saw that, he bowed his head and started praying to Lord Shiva. And then Lord Shiva appeared to him, and he wanted to be, he wanted the power to kill Krishna. <clears throat> Shiva said, I can't grant you that, you have to figure out how to do it yourself. So he created this mystical fire, and he meditated on this fire called Dakshina. In that fire, a form of Lord Shiva came out that was fiery. And this fiery form of Lord Shiva was going everywhere, burning the whole, the towns, the villages, the trees, everything. The word got back to Krishna that this, uh, this mystical form of Shiva created by Sudakshina was causing havoc everywhere. And Krishna was playing a dice game. And, and uh, Krishna liked to play dice, but he wasn't so good at it, he would lose, usually. <laughs> So he was playing this dice game, and when this person, Sudakshina, was, had caused this, Krishna said, Chakra, you go and you take care of this. So he, Krishna didn't want to give up playing dice, <laughs> so he sent his chakra. The chakra finished off everybody, including Sudakshina, <laughs> killed this mystical demon which looked like Shiva but wasn't Shiva, <laughs> and then returned to Krishna. And Krishna stayed and played the game and lost. <laughs> so 
Yeah, so Krishna was had he had a we had to buy time. He knew it took time to kill these demons. So now there's a few demons left. This is in my reading of Gopal Champu. So now he still has to kill Jarasandha yet, who is one of the powerful demons. I think Shalva is still there. Shalva is there. Pundrak is finished. <laughs> so Krishna, one by one, when he kills all the demons, of course, the devotees in Vrindavan couldn't wait for Krishna to return to Vrindavan. So they made an arrangement to meet Krishna at Kurukshetra. And so that's a beautiful, beautiful pastime. How the residents of Vrindavan appeared in Kurukshetra to meet Krishna. But when they saw Krishna, they didn't really feel the same happiness as when they would be with him in Vrindavan because he was surrounded by infantry soldiers and military and so much uh, armor that the Krishna was more like, now he was in the mood of a Kshatriya. <laughs> and so they couldn't feel that sweet happiness of Vrindavan Dham. And there's some beautiful prayers <laughs> offered by the residents of Vrindavan, petitioning Krishna to return to Vrindavan. Especially Srimati Radha Rani made some beautiful prayers. <clears throat> Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati says something really, really amazingly interesting in this regard. Uh, when Radharani came, she also came to Vrindavan, and she couldn't relate to Krishna. And of course, in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, it talks about the prayer she offered as she longs to see him back in Vrindavan, playing on his flute, and uh, surrounded by beautiful trees and birds and rivers and she couldn't relate to him there, although she was feeling some happiness in seeing him. For Radharani, Vrindavan is everything. She's called Vrindavan Aishwari. And Krishna in Vrindavan is, with Radharani, is the highest moon. So the separation that Radharani was feeling when she met Krishna in Kurukshetra is explained by Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati as the highest form of service anywhere. To serve Radharani in her separation from Krishna is the highest form of service. There's no higher service. To pacify Radharani's feelings of separation from, from Krishna is the pinnacle or epitome of all service. But that separation reached its climax in Kurukshetra. Therefore, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati says, one who serves Kurukshetra is serving the highest. It's higher than Vrindavan. Whoa. It's hard to figure that one out. <laughs> That's only because of Radharani's separation, separation mood that she couldn't come to that feeling that she would experience in her separation from Krishna and Vrindavan, although she was meeting Krishna in Kurukshetra. It's quite sweet. So there's much more that we can talk about because the whole mood of Lord Chaitanya's teachings is service and separation. Don't try to meet Krishna. This is not our process. Try to serve Krishna where Krishna wants to meet you. That is our process. So in that desire to meet Krishna, the, the, the longing to meet Krishna is the highest form of happiness. So that is the mood that is being practiced and taught by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Service in separation. And that service and separation increases the longing for meeting. This is the point. The more you feel separation from Krishna, the more you want to meet Krishna. So the extent of that separation brings about more desires to associate with Krishna and to serve, and that takes the form of wanting to serve Krishna in different ways. So this is where we 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 come in. We think. In that mood of separation, let me serve Krishna by serving him like this, like this, like this, like this. So we, 
we come up with and uh, focus on serving the Lord in the mood of wanting to meet the Lord, but knowing that that mood of separation causes the heart to become more and more absorbed in Krishna. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah? So that's why Prabhupada Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati used to say, don't try to see Krishna in the bushes of Vrindavan. Try to serve Krishna in a way that he wants to come and see you. And he gave a practical example also. He says, a person is... A person has a job, and every day they go to work on time. Every day they do their work very nicely. Every day they get along with their fellow workers. They never miss a day. And they are, you know, they have a very, uh, what we say, wonderful attitude about their work, about being with others. So after some time, the head of the establishment who owns it, he wants to come and see this man and meet him. So he hears about all his good qualities and his, uh, his, his, his wonderful work. And he comes and he says, well, thank you for your, you know, for your dedication to your job and your, uh, your working with, with other one people in such a nice way. So he comes and gives him a, a present. To congratulate him. So Bhakti Siddhanta said, This is how we should be. We should try to do everything so nicely and get along with all the devotees as best as we can. And uh, that way, Krishna wants to see you. <laughs> if Krishna wants to see you, then there's no problem. If you want to see Krishna, that might be a problem. <laughs> It's not a problem, it's bec but it's the only is what is our qualification? <laughs> of course, Prabhupada used to say, yeah, you can see Krishna. He's right there. He's standing there in his form as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Radha, Krishna, Nohiyanya. He's Radharani and Krishna in one. So he's there personally. Lord Nityananda is non different than Balaram, so we have we have Balaram Nityananda there. We have Advaita Acharya who is non different than Mahavishnu and Sada Shiva, so Shiva and Mahavishnu are there. We have Gadadhar who is Srimati Radharani with the element of Lalita Saki. So you have Lalita and Radharani there. You have Srivas Thakur, who is none other than Narada Muni himself. <laughs> so is there anything else you want to know? <laughs> well, this is not some, you know, nice words. This is fact. These personalities are personally present in the Panchatattva. So to have Panchatattva here, just like how many places in the world, in our society, are there Panchatattva deities in our active temples? Maybe four or five places. We have the place in uh, Mayapur, of course, in, uh, what is that place in California also? Laguna Beach, thank you. And we also have Hawaii. Hawaii has Panchatattva. Well, Prabhupada didn't install too many Panchatattva. That's one, two, three, four. Huh? Sweden, they have Panchatattva, yeah. Five, yeah. In Russia also? This is someone, it's a, a new installation then, yeah. They're trying to catch up, huh? <laughs> okay, so, yeah. So, yeah, this is uh, very rare that the devotees can worship Panchatattva. Okay, so we'll stop there and see if there's any comments or questions. Tomorrow is Diwali, right? Uh, Sunday. Well, Sunday? No, my calendar says tomorrow for Diwali and Sunday for Govardhan Puja.
That's what my calendar says, but what does yours say? Mm. No, Diwali is always the, that's because the last day of Diwali uh, in, in, introduces Govardhan Puja because Diwali ends, there's a two week period that we're in where people who are from the Vedic culture, they perform austerities and penances for two weeks and the last day is a celebration on Diwali. And then Krishna comes the day after to say, forget all these things, just worship me. <laughs> That's the purpose of Govardhan. Leela is to tell everybody, don't worry, don't worry about worshiping all these other dem demigods. If you worship me, you worship all the demigods automatically. Yeah. So Diwali and Govardhan Puja is always two different days. It's always two different days. And you'll find if you do a little research around the world, you'll find that's how the temples align themselves. Sorry about that. <laughs> You can't. You can't. How can you celebrate both together? It's not possible. One is one is Ram Lila, and one's Krishna Lila. <laughs> it's not possible. Uh, whoever made your calendar, fire him. <laughs> I have my calendar, and I have a couple calendars, and they all say two different days. Well, they, all, well, they all say tomorrow is Diwali. Mm. And Krishna stole butter on the Diwali day and he wasn't lifting Govardhan Hill on that same day, so. <laughs> yeah. What's that? Tuesday, officially? Right, yeah. Where the sisters all worship their brothers, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, all these calendars are wrong then. <laughs> I have the one from the UK and the one from the United States, so I don't know. They have to be different because they're always in competition to each other. <laughs> when Prabhupada was here, everything was simple. It wasn't, we didn't have any problems with titis or akadasis. It's like akadasis sometimes, one place in the world it's one day and one place it's the next. So if you're traveling, you can miss both. <laughs> or if you're traveling, you can celebrate it two days in a row. <laughs> I've seen that. It's happened to me already. <laughs> so yeah, when Prabhupada was here, Mayapur was the standard. Whatever was going on in Mayapur was for the rest of the world. But I guess now we are so advanced. <laughs> anyway, I don't want to criticize any of the activities going on now. I'm sure there is some validity to it, but it's so confusing when it comes to these uh, titis, you know. Yeah. Okay, so uh, was it Danlu? Is that it? You have a question? You have to make up for what was, what's his name, Uber guy, because he always asks questions. So you're his protege. <laughs> so you have to ask your question. <laughs> What is the meaning of these titis? Or? Titis means a time for observing a type of fast where the fast is broken within a certain time period. And so the time period 
that the fast is broken is the titi. Just like every ekadasi, there's a titi. And if you break the fast within that titi time, you get the benefit of the ekadasi. You get the full benefit. If you don't break it in within that time, and then you get a lesser benefit. Yeah. Banu Swami is very much expert at presenting all these things and he's giving clear understandings on if you read some of his writings about these holy days you can understand a lot of what the, the importance of these titis. Jai Sisi Panchatattva Ki Can I ask you just, what is the name of that demon that uh, Krishna put uh, chakra on his head to be headed, that he wanted his chakra, something like this? We did that with so many demons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one demon, uh, when Krishna said, what do you want? And the demon said, I want your chakra, something like this. No, that was Pondraka. Oh, Pondraka. <laughs> yeah, he said, give up your symbols, they're mine. <laughs> Krishna says, well, may, well maybe, maybe my symbols are not mine, but I'll give them back to you anyway. <laughs> he did. He gave him the chakra back. <laughs> he gave my haircut just below the chin. <laughs> Krishna couldn't, couldn't see correctly, so he, when he wanted to give him a haircut, he cut too, he cut too low. <laughs> <laughs> that was Pondraka. He used to dress up like Krishna and carry the symbols. <laughs> so now we're laughing, but you know, <laughs> nowadays it's still going on. <laughs> there were so many so called imitations or incarnations of God going around everywhere especially in India, but they, they travel to Western countries trying to make followers. In the 60s and the 70s, there was, every day there was a false incarnation coming to the United States. I remember when we were doing some work with Christians, we found out some statistics. This was in 1985, which is 35 years ago that uh, at that time there were 2,500 persons in the United States claiming to be Jesus Christ. <laughs> really, 2,500, that was in 1985. So you can see, you wonder how many more are there. I met one of them actually, <laughs> I did. He came to New Vrindavan and he was, said he was Christ and he expected us to treat him like Christ. So we decided, yeah, we, he needs to be crucified. So, <laughs> so we gave him the, the royal treatment. <laughs> Not exactly, but <laughs> some devotees wanted to do that. <laughs> and so what happened was, um, I happened to be driving my, I used to drive a Ford van and travel around. So I was driving. And he was, and the devotees had asked him to leave the community. So he was leaving, and I was driving my van, and he was on the road where I was passing. So he was hitchhiking. So Jesus was hitchhiking. <laughs> so I stopped to pick him up. <laughs> he got in. And uh, <laughs> he was complaining that, you know, people in New Vrindavan didn't understand him. So I said, well, if you're Jesus Christ, you have to show me your stigmata, you know, stigmata, the marks of crucifixion on the hands. So he went like this. I'll show you. This is exactly what he did to me. <laughs> and I said, well, I didn't see anything. He said, I only show it once. <laughs> So I, so I thought, it's very nice that Jesus Christ 
you know, continues to perform austerity, so I asked him to get out of the van <laughs> so he could continue on his way. So I, I pretty much insisted, and he, he, was, he was a nice Christ, he left. <laughs> So there's so many cheaters out there. <laughs> there are people who can do that. You know the story. One man, he went away and worked under the guise of a mystic yoga, yogi. And for 18 years he learned mystic powers. He came back to his village and wanted to impress his friends and family members. So he did a demonstration of walking across the water. So one man who was in the village, he said, he spent 18 years to get across the water. I can just pay two pice to the boatman get across. <laughs> so yeah, there's so many cheaters out there. And people have mystic powers, you know. Even devotees have mystic power. That's a fact. Devotees, when devotees preach, they can change the minds and hearts of the other. That's a, that's a type of mystic power. When devotees are out there distributing books, they talk and people become bewildered and buy the book and then they turn around and the devotee is gone. He's got the money and the, devotee, the man is looking. What did I just do? People are not, yeah, actually we see that when devotees are out there, they're empowered to uh, distribute books and people, I mean, it, it's just to go on the streets and sell books, that's difficult. You know, who, 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 who's walking on the streets interested in buying books? But that, but the whole process of distributing books means you are empowered. You are empowered to do that work. And therefore people stop, they buy, and they appreciate. It's not something ordinary, book distribution. It's on the complete transcendental platform. Okay, so we're moving on in time. So my, uh, tomorrow night I have a special class with Sutapa Prabhu from the devotees in London at 7.30. So um, I won't be able to come for class tomorrow night. So, but Sunday, can we start a little earlier for class on Sunday? Is that possible? Well, maybe we can just do the Damodar prayers and end right there instead of continuing on with Kirtan. And try Sunday to. It will be festival, probably. It will be Abhishek at 5 o'clock. Oh. And then after the class. Then what time is the class? Um, we didn't fix yet, but around 6 o'clock, something like that. Oh, okay. That's good. That's and then nice. Damodar Oh, good, good. All right. Yeah, because the Leela is quite long. And to cut it short would really to do an injustice to the Leela. It's really full of many, many interesting and very important points. There's so many spiritual points that we can learn from this Leela that helps us in our Krishna consciousness. Okay, thank you very much. As they say, Lakanoch. <laughs> Hare Krishna. <laughs>